AP Calculus students, Calculus 2 students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School. We're going to continue our video series over centers of mass. This is now what I believe to be video number four, where our focus is really ultimately going to be working on problem number five, example five, where we find the center of the region bounded by two separate functions, f and g. If you didn't get a chance to look at my video that covered example four, I would invite you to check that out on my YouTube channel because it will give you a, a better introduction into the calculus behind finding the center of mass of a planar lamina. And it all focuses upon the usage of these, well, formulas, if you will. You have three different things that you'll have to compute, three different integrals. First of all, you would have a moment about the x-axis, a moment about the y-axis, and then you'd have to compute the overall mass of your shaded region with uniform density rho so that you could then invoke your special little x-bar and y-bar ratios that will pin down the actual ordered pair that would serve as the center of your planar lamina or your shaded region. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and do example five, and I'm going to focus on finding the moment about the y-axis first. So I want you to look at this formula. So I'm going to be leaving it in just a moment. You're going to be taking the rho, the uniform density value, multiplied by the definite integral of x times f minus g of x with respect to x. So for the purpose of example 5, we would end up with m sub y to be rho times the definite integral. I'll fill in my boundaries in a little bit. x is my distance. Remember moments. Moments are nothing more than distances times mass. So m lowercase for mass, x for distance. If we're talking about balancing this thing around the y-axis, then obviously the distance that our representative slice or representative rectangle would be from the y-axis is of monumental importance to us. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to find that particular distance. So that's why we use x. And then, of course, the function on top is 4 minus x squared. And the function on bottom would be x plus 2. All of this would be integrated with respect to x. And we're going to use our boundaries from negative 2 up to positive 1. So there's your setup for m sub y. Now, I'm going to pause the video because I, I want to calculate this uh, moment, but I, I want to do so in a much quicker way that you can enjoy the video and really get the gist of what we're trying to teach. So um, I would invite you, if you're working out the problem, to double check your work with mine and make sure that you would agree, and then we would move on to finding the moment about the why. So we'll pick up right where we left off here with what you see in red. And you can see that I just spent quite a bit of time just simplifying the expression that's inside of the parentheses here, only so that I could distribute the x from the outside. Then we're ready to perform our anti-differentiation right here, very critical step, with the boundaries of 1 and negative 2 that would get plugged in individually. There's your 1 plugged in. And then your negative 2 would get plugged in. And we would end up with this expression. And then it's just an arithmetic to combine like terms and eventually simplify to get negative 9 fourths times rho. Now remember, rho is just our arbitrary uniform uh, density that really in these problems won't seem to matter much because every ratio that we would be dealing with, every part of our, of our ratio, the numerator and the denominator, will contain rho, so eventually it's going to cancel out. All right, so with that said, I'm going to use the space that I have over here, and I'm going to start setting up our moment about the x-axis. Now, the moment about the x-axis is going to be a little bit more complex to put together. So if we go back to our formula page, we can see now that the distance portion is defined to be the average of the two functions, which does make a lot of sense. You would take the f and the g 
add them together, divide by two to find out exactly where you would be located within the middle, and that would serve as your distance. Notice the multiplication of f minus g. This guy is still going to serve as that particular mass. So we put that in motion. Our boundaries are still going to go from bow, bottom negative 2 to upper bound of 1. So we start off with f of x, which is our 4 minus x squared. Add to that the g of x, x plus 2, all of which divides by 2. And then that would be multiplied by our f minus g. balance our parentheses, write our differential dx, and what we've got now is a pretty reliable expression that's going to compute mx. Reliable, yes. A little tedious to work, I would say yes again. This is going to require a little bit of uh, algebraic manipulation in order to simplify it to a point where we can integrate, and I'm going to do that here uh, while I pause the video, and then we'll check with each other at the end. And we are back with the solution here. And it took us several steps. I wanted to check my work very carefully, but let's just take a look at what was involved with this particular solution. First of all, I wanted to get this denominator of 2 out of this integrand as soon as possible so that I could deal with some things that weren't fractions necessarily. So I took care of that, combined some uh, like integer terms 4 and 2 in the first polynomial and did something kind of similar here in the second polynomial. The 4 minus the 2 produces a positive 2. So look at what we're left with, a trinomial times a trinomial expansion, which we would have to distribute through. I just simply took the negative x squared and distributed it through all three terms first, followed by the positive x term distributed through all three terms next, followed by the positive 6 term distributed through all three terms, which gives you this wonderful nine-term polynomial expression prior to being simplified to this step. Again, just algebra. The next step is really the, the one key calculus step to the problem, and that's to take the antiderivative of this expression, which was rather easy to do. And upon doing that, I decided to simplify the two middle terms a little bit to produce these two guys. So I felt finally I was ready to start to plug in my boundaries, which still is kind of a, a tricky proposition. We wanted to proceed through this slowly, so that's the result after plugging 1 in for x. And then plugging in negative 2 for x is a little bit trickier. Notice the usage of all of my negative signs that are going to be invoked with this particular term here. And once I start simplifying, I notice that the 1 fifth and the positive 32 fifths were going to produce 33 fifths. I got my 7 by combining these three integers. And then uh, the rest of this is just distributing the negative into these last three terms. Three negatives make a negative. Yes, they do. Double negative of that 8 is a positive. A double negative for that negative 24 is a positive. Luckily, the 24s cancel. Yep, I can probably show you that here. And then 15 and the 33 fifths that's left makes 108 fifths. And then when I combine my 5 and 2 by multiplication, I have a 108 over 10 times my row. Whew, that was rough. <laughs> Luckily, we are very near to finding the final solution to this problem. The key now is to find that quantity that we talked about earlier that's going to serve as your overall mass, which is just nothing more than the area of that shaded region multiplied by its density rho, something that you've done many times probably in a Calculus 1 course, finding the area between two curves. So I'm going to do that over here in my green. So we're going to have rho times the definite integral from negative 2 up to 1 of your function f of x, and if you remember, f of x was 4 minus x squared, minus the g of x, the bottom function, that would be this line right here, which is x plus 2. One last time, we have just a little bit of, of calculation work, although this one's not nearly as messy. 
I'm going to pause the video. We'll solve this one, and I'll meet you on the other end. And again, we're back with the work shown for the mass. So my first step was to do nothing more than just combine the 4 and the 2. We're ready to integrate. Boy, that was quick. We're ready to take this antiderivative term by term by term using the power rule. And then we plug in the upper boundary of 1. So we end up with this negative 1 third minus 1 half plus 2. Subtract. Again, this is the really tricky part. When you're dealing with a boundary that's negative and you might have some odd exponents floating around your expression, things can get very tricky. So take your time. That's why I decided to show all of the negative signs that would be residing in the problem. Take a look at that. Make sure you agree. And then really the next two steps are just my way of trying to simplify the integers and the fractions as best I could. Uh, take a look at that if you need to pause the video. And I ended up with 9 halves times rho. Now we are all set to finish this up. Because if you remember, our formula for x bar is the moment about the y-axis divided by mass. Now if that seems counterintuitive, why would we have a, a subscript of y with our x bar? Well, for one, that's what this formula tells us to do, but that's not a great reason. Again, the reason has to do with the fact that your moment about the y-axis is how you're balancing in this horizontal direction. So it certainly would be very uh, logical to think that that's going to produce a position of x, just like the, the uh, y bar is going to be the ratio of the moment about the x-axis divided by our particular mass. So in this particular problem, yep, we're going to have to think back, what was the value of m sub y again? Well, it's way up here. That was this, this negative 9 fourths that we came up with. Maybe I should have circled that when we finished it up. Negative 9 fourths times rho. If we divide that by our 9 halves times rho, we again see that the rows will cancel. And then the negative 9 fourths multiplied by the reciprocal 2 ninths will give us a negative 1 half x bar very quickly. All right, let's go ahead and move this guy over and we'll calculate y bar, which would be our moment about the x-axis, which we have just slightly located above here, the 108 row over 10. Multiply that by, or let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and, and, and be consistent. We're going to divide that by our 9 halves row once again. But as we said or did before, we'll just end up multiplying by the reciprocal. We're going to see that the rows again will cancel, so I'm going to elect not to write those. And do a little canceling here. The 108 over 9 would reduce to uh, a 12, and the 2 over 10 would reduce to a 5. So we've got it. We have got our ordered pair. Our balancing point for this problem seemingly would be the ordered pair negative half and 12 fifths, or another way to think of the 12 fifths might be as 2.4, I believe, right? Talking about 2 and um, 2 fifths, 2 and 2 fifths, 2.4. So if we look back at this picture, we think, does that seem to make sense? Could we balance this there? So I'm going to take a very fine-tipped pen here and pick a color that will stand out. So negative 1 half right about here, 2.4 right about here. It's almost where this dot here is, 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 is indicating the center of that representative slice. That's just a coincidence. So it's really that, that location of that pink ordered pair that would really suffice as the balancing point of this planar laminar. So as you can see, these problems can require quite a bit of, of messy rigor. Um, most of the time in my class, my focus is more on just the setup of the problem, and I would let my, my students use a graphing calculator that would perform definite integration to, to streamline the process a little bit. But because it's early in the year, I do tend to occasionally have my students practice their integration techniques. So anyhow, I hope this video helps. I know it was long, uh, but we'll... Uh, See you next time when we wrap up our discussion on center of mass.